الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون صدق الله العظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الدعاء مخ العبادة وكما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين <تصفيق> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran and he declares that وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ that we did not create the jinn kind, the jinnat and the mankind except except for what? إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ except that they worship me and if you look at the condition of the humans, right? Um, and you kind of stand back and consider human being, you know, as a creation, we will very quickly realize that human beings are always in need. You know, no matter who we are, how much we have, how little we have, we are almost always in need. And regardless how old we are right so when we are very small you know we're a baby we are in desperate need of our mother to take care of us right when we're older we need things right and these needs they never end it goes from the cradle to the grave our needs never end in fact even in the akhira we are in desperate need of the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, remember this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't created us except that we worship Him. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions that ad-du'a'u mukhul ibadah. Right? First, on one side we have that we have our goal, that we are created to make ibadah. Right? And Rasulullah sallallahu is telling us that dua, right? Dua is mukhul ibadah. That is the essence. That is the core of ibadah. Right? So, ibadah is what? We all know ibadah is worshipping. And worshipping is of different kinds. Right? So we're here to pray Jummah salah. Right? So that's a kind of ibadah. Then, Siyam, we fast, it's a kind of ibadah. People go for hajj. So there's various different kinds of ibadah. And even things like giving zakat, that's a form of ibadah. So what we have to make sure is that our ibadah is not void of dua. Right? And some ibadah that we do there's dua in it intrinsically, right? For example, when we pray salah, there's duas inside our salah. We speak it, right? We say it, we might not understand it, we might not think about it, but it's very much intrinsic, built into our ibadah. And in others, it's not in there, right? But we have to make dua, right? This asking, this connection, part of every kind of ibadah that we 
indulgent <clears throat> and in fact when we leave out ibadah when we leave out dua right which is the essence of ibadah from any kind of ibadah that we do what happens what remains is just a empty shell right we did something we will not be responsible since we've already done that thing but we missed out on a big part of it that was the dua that was attached to it so every time we do any kind of ibadah we remind ourselves that uh, this ibadah first and foremost if we're praying we remind ourselves at least understand the meanings of the dua that we're making during our salah right and after salah we sit down and reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our needs so one of the things I wanted to talk about today um, and this applies to me everyone here is that we need to start making dua right and dua is something that we've heard we've all heard so much about dua how important it is but if we see if we were to you know follow around an average muslim we see that the amount of dua that this person makes is not that much right in fact after salah he might sit and some people don't even you know sit they just salam alaikum salam alaikum and then they get up and they go so dua in our lives is very 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 minimal so we need to build this habit again build this habit of asking more and more from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we all have things to ask we just don't think it's important right so for example someone over here might need a better might be looking for a better job a better pay someone over here might be looking for you know some sort of shifa from a disease or illness right everyone is looking for something right in fact for a person for whom everything is going well right he or she may want for that thing to keep going right at the least that's what we want we want everything to be in its right form so we need to make it a habit right make it a habit that before we seek out the physical part of it of the solution that we're looking for right for example if if it's for example looking for a job we go out and you know log in and upload a resume and send it we also do the asking do this dua part with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so connecting our needs with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and it's it's also very important to note that we need to take that to take those asbab to get that whatever we're looking for but this connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this need that we have to show it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also extremely important. And no one knows our needs better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who put us in that situation in the first place. And we are turning away from Him and looking for all the other solutions that might give us our that might solve our problem but the solution is right in front of us the one who put us there in that situation is the one who is always ready to listen to us we just have to turn to him and when we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of our needs what happens that is an indication of the greatness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who grants everything. He is the one who removes difficulty. He is the one who removes any kind of calamity that we, that we might be in. So it's an indication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
that we are in need and he is the one with the grandeur. <clears throat> and then a lot of people have this question that I make a lot of dua. You know, I've made so much dua in the past. I don't know what happens. Like it doesn't get accepted. And we've all been in that situation. We might be looking for something. We are asking for dua and it's just not happening. Right? So for this, ulama have written different reasons why we don't see our duas getting accepted. Right? The first case is that we ask for something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? We ask something. I want this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I really need this in this situation. And it's granted. Right? We see it happen right away. Within the time frame we want it in, it happens. So that's case one. Right? And then there's case two where you may ask for something, but it doesn't get granted. We are not awarded that thing that we're looking for, but it happens a lot later in life. Maybe six months, a year, two years, maybe really far down in life. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's best for us in that time. Right? Our knowledge is very limited. Right? Our knowledge is very, very, very limited. And we don't see beyond maybe a few days. But Allah sees beyond anything. Right? So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deems it fit that this thing that we're looking for is granted to us later down the line, it'll be more beneficial. So he grants it way down the line. So that is the second situation. The third one is that that thing that we're looking for is not granted at all, right? Not now, not ever, until we pass away. But instead of that thing that we're looking for, we are granted something else in lieu of that, right? And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't see that thing being helpful for us, right? We might see that, oh, if I get this thing, I'll be good. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees again, His knowledge is infinite, right? So He sees that this thing is actually giving Him all this money is actually not good for Him. He doesn't know it, but this money is not good for him. But instead of that, I'll give him something else. I'll give him what? I'll give him pious children. Something like that. Right? So, our expectation was that this will be accepted. This dua will be accepted at some, some, some point down the line. But we got something else in return that, that is obviously better. And the last one is that we ask for something. Right? We repeatedly keep asking for something. And that dua is not granted at all, right? So that's not granted and anything in lieu of that is also not granted, right? So we look for something and there obviously that thing is not there and there's nothing else in place of that in his life. For that person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him in lieu of that thing, something in the akhirah, right? He gets something, he gets something that's so much more valuable that he couldn't imagine having that thing in this world, right? In this world, he might be just a bit despondent. But in Akhirah, when he sees that thing, right? And this comes in different narrations, in different wordings, that this person, when he sees that he was granted this thing, and he's like, how did I get this thing, right? How was I granted this, this and this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remind us that you asked for something in this world and you kept asking, kept asking. And in lieu of that, I gave you this. And that for in that moment, that person will say that, Oh Allah, had I not gotten anything in this world that I had asked for and everything in the akhir. So, 
when we ask for something so much and we don't get it in return, that is the best situation. We might think that that's like the worst situation that we're asking for something, we got nothing. But in fact, when we ask for something and we get nothing in return for that, and we get it in the akhirah, that is the best form of currency. And so what we understand from this is that asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, beseeching to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reaching out to him is a complete win-win, gain-gain situation. We lose nothing, right? There's always something for us. <clears throat> and then a lot of people have this question that when is dua answered? Right? And the simple answer is dua is answered all the time. We are sitting here. We don't even have to raise our hands. If we make dua from our heart, even that is answered. Right? But there are some situations. There, there are some times where Rasulullah has mentioned to us that these times duas are more readily accepted. They are more readily granted. And so these are the times that we have to look out for. Right? So, first and foremost is something that we can all benefit from. And that happens every single day. That is the time right after Fard Salah. Right? Anytime we pray Fard Salah, right? Right after that, that is a very accepted time. Right? So either we can say salam and, you know, go on with our day or we can try to attain that essence of our ibadah, right? And ask during that time and our duas will be very, very readily accepted. And then also something that happens every single day is the time right before Fard comes in. Uh, Fajr Salah comes in, right? That is also a very accepted time. And we see this in many different narrations that Allah SWT comes down and He's asking who is awake and whose needs can I fulfill? So, that is another time that we can benefit from. And there are so many different other times, but for day-to-day -day, for day-to-day -day activities, if we can add our du'as during these times, then we we are sure that these will be more readily accepted in front of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And then there's other times in Hajj, in Ramadan, and in the last ten days of Ramadan, Laylatul Qadr. And those things will come when when they come. We also under, we've also heard and realized the importance of those times. But for day to day activities, at least, right after we're done with our, with our fard salah, we take out some time, right. And if we're not in the habit, then at least start with a few minutes, right. I just want to sit there and make dua. Just the habit of sitting and making dua. And once we're good at that, we Keep adding that dua, increasing that, the amount of dua that we make. And then, a lot of, a lot of questions, a lot of times people ask that how, how do you make dua, right? There's etiquettes to everything, right? You can make dua at any time, right? And inshallah, it'll be accepted. But when we present Allah, something to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we present our needs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should do it with etiquette. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're asking from, right? So there's etiquette that we learn from the life of Sahaba on how to make dua. So again, you can make dua anytime, anywhere, you know, and out of respect, we don't do it in dirty places like the bathroom and stuff like that. But we can make dua anytime, anywhere. Sitting, Laying down, how, whatever the condition, we can make dua. And when it comes to making dua, and we're sitting up right and you know facing the qibla, right? 
there are a few things that we can do to enhance our dua, make it even better. We add durood upon the Prophet ﷺ at the beginning and at the end of our dua. Right? Because no matter who we are, right? Durood that we send to our Prophet is always accepted, regardless. Right? So if we add durood at the beginning and at the end of our dua, our hope is that everything in the middle will also be accepted. Second, is that we make some sort of tahmeed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. Something to mention the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, alhamdulillah, he is the one for whom all the ham, all the grandness belongs to, right? All the, everything that we have, the ham belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so these are the few things that we need to keep in mind that we can do to enhance our duas. A few other things that we could do is memorizing the duas from the Prophet, right? And memorizing is good, but if you can memorize it and also understand the meaning, then it gives it a lot more weight that we, we, are, we know what we're ask, asking for. So we memorize the duas and also understand its meaning. So that will also put a lot of barakah in our ibadah of dua. dua. And what are the things that we can ask for? Right? In, in many narrations, we, we see and we understand that there's no big or small thing. We can ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for small things. Ya Allah, I hope my day, my day goes well. Ya Allah, put barakah in my day. Small things, you know, like whatever I'm working on, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it goes smoothly, right? And we ask for big things. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guide this ummah. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us khatma of iman. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us jannat al firdaus. Right? So there's the smallest of du'as we can ask. The biggest of du'as we can ask. And everything in the middle. Right? And some, a lot of people complain that when I start making du'a, I don't know what I want. I, I don't know. I forget. You know? I forget what I want. But for those people, and if we're one of them, just... Make note that I have this exam coming up. Just make a note. And when you're making dua, just take out your phone and remember that I got to make dua for that. Right? So, these are small things, but you are involving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in each and every single, each and every single problem in our life. We are bringing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a solution. Right? So, these are the few things that we, we need to keep in mind. And one thing we constantly need to keep asking for is success in the Akhirah. Right? Because Rasul Sam mentions in another narration that Al Kayyisu Mandana Nafsahu that a smart person, an intelligent person, right? An intelligent person is not something that we may call intelligent in this world. You know, someone with, just because they have a PhD or, you know, there's just some big shot, doesn't make him intelligent. What Rasulullah mentions, that is the def definition of an intelligent person. So Rasulullah mentions that Al Kayyusu Mandana Nafsa, that a smart person, the smart person is a person who Mandana, he controls, he subdues his nafs. He wants to do all these things, but he subdues his nafs. And what he does, in lieu of that, wa amila lima ba'd al -maut. And this person, in lieu of following his nafs, what he does is, he does things for the akhirah. He works towards the akhirah. He builds his akhirah. He spends his wealth. He spends his physical self in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
trying to earn the akhirah. That is the smart person that Rasulullah is reminding us. So, a person that you might see in the masjid sitting in the corner, always making zikr. And sometimes it might cross our mind that does he not have like a family or anything? What does he do here all the time? But that person is working for his akhirah. That is the smart person. And the hadith continues that وَلَعَاجِزُ And the foolish person, right? A foolish person, a no good person is a person when أَتْبَعَ نَفْسَهُ That he follows whatever his nafs says. Oh, I feel like doing that, I'm going to go do that. I feel like doing this, I'm going to go do this. Like whatever the nafs is asking for, he just gives in, right? And while he's doing that, wa tamanna illa. That at the same time he has false hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's doing all the wrong things. He's not changing any of his actions, but he's keeping this false hope. No action, but keeping false hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I'll be fine in the akhirah. Making no action, but asking or expecting great reward in the akhirah. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the intelligent person, intelligent people that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has described to us as. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from being this foolish person that Rasulullah sallam has told us about. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to really beseech and ask for everything from him and take our tawakkal from this dunya and the people and Take it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He is the one who makes everything happen. Right? It's not our boss, it's not our supervisor, it's not the CEO that gives us that provision. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And, and we remind us and we remind our families that I might be just a sabab and as bab that provides for this family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the true sustainer of not just us, but all the mankind. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to practice upon what was said and heard. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.